Cloud. All right. Howdy, folks. I'm excited to have here with me Josh Pollock. Josh, say hello, my friend. Hi, Zach. All right. So we are chatting today about your talk for the JavaScript WordPress conference, which at a high level is something related to data and state flow um, in JavaScript, in WordPress, what Gutenberg allows, kind of that sort of thing. So I think I could just kick it off to you to talk for a bit. Um, about what you think is interesting with that, what we might want to include, what, I don't know, we want to skip over, that sort of thing, but I'll turn it over to you to kind of begin the process. Okay, so I think no matter what you're learning with JavaScript today, like if that's React or Vue, state management starts out kind of simple if hmm. you stick to the rule of everything flows down, right? Yeah. So in a React component, you pass in props, and as long as, you don't change those props inside of the component. Everything's just kind of clean. Whatever that component is a child of passes data down and it just kind of magically updates um, and nobody knows why, right? I mean, people know why, but you don't need to know why. It's auto-magical. And yeah. so um, in Vue.js is the same way. You mount a component inside another component and it, you know, or an app, a component inside of an app, a Vue instance, and it just kind of flows down. Yeah. So I feel like there's like this stage and learning to use these types of tools that start with like, I can't get data to work properly because I'm trying to go both directions at once. Mm -hmm. And then you get this like really nice thing where you're like, oh, this stuff's so easy because data just keeps flowing down and it's all beautiful. And then you have a form input in your app. Mm -hmm. um, and so you now need to send, right? You're like, oh man, I'm going to make this component. Like it's just the input, right? It is totally decoupled. I could reuse it anywhere. And then you flow the data in and it works that you need to like write your change handler. And then yeah. now you're in the despair part of learning your <laughs> front end framework. Right. So at what point do you think, um, let's talk about our audience real quick, specifically in relation to that, because uh, this is not going to be a super beginners JavaScript conference, but do you think most folks are at a point where we could just assume they understand the principles of Redux or do you think, or of, of one way data flow in that, or do you think it's still good? And I, and I might agree with this if you said so to kind of give an introduction or overview to that as just a transitioning somebody from one way of looking at it to another. Yeah. So that's, we got exact, that's the problem. So state management systems, flux like state management systems, such as Redux, um, which is used in WordPress core now, uh, WP data is an abstraction on Redux. Um, or if you're Vue.js, uh, Vuex. Yeah. Um, sorry, I, like, I'm really into React now because of Gutenberg, but. Vue we know your problem. roots, my friend. Yeah, yeah. No, Vue, I, I love you, yeah. No, but I love Angular, but like it's over uh, for me. Like <laughs> NG1, I loved it, but then. Like, I, still, I still love. No, no, no let's not go there. It. That's a whole th separate thing. But here's the thing. <laughs> This is the problem that we're talking about. Is okay. that it, it, like the problem is like getting the data back up in a sensible way. In view, again, one of the common patterns is not to use the official, you know, state management thing, view X, is to create a separate view X as an event bus or a separate view yep. instance as an event bus. And the reason why, um, the reason why we do that is because it's super simple. We can just attach data to it. It's observable the same way view is, you know, and um, it's super simple. And there is the ability to deep dispatch any event in view, mm -hmm. just arbitrary, like you would dispatch a change event from a handler, right? Yeah. I'm sure it's exactly the same code under the hood. So you can just dis emit any event. So that's a pattern that we use in Caldera Forms Pro, which is a Vue.js front end um, yep. on Laravel. Um, and so we just have a second view instance that we call event bus. And so we use it for things like where there's an event, there's a method on there called like open alert. And that's like the main alert component that's at yep. the top of the UI. Um, but also that lets us update stuff and it's super simple. It doesn't scale as well as say like Vuex or Redux. Um, and, but what these things do is they allow your components to be circular. So I started with the, in terms of data flow, I started with that event bus thing, which you can do in um, React with like the, any type of event emitter, um, where you just basically have a glo almost global function that updates data, sends data up to another thing that can then 
you know, a, a, the higher order component can subscribe to that event. So whenever this input changes, fire the, you know, if this input changes the product price, fire the product price updated event. And that's in the component that actually has that input. And then in the parent component that actually man owns the data, um, you have an event, you subscribe to that same event. And when it happens, then you mutate that one source of data. So that's good, but it's still keeping that one single source of state mm -hmm. inside of your component. So you have one source of state, but you're super violating the single responsibility principle <laughs> because that's like also your main component for your user interface, right? Yeah. And so that's where Redux or Vuex or something like that comes in. And so in Gutenberg, I feel like I was kind of, you know. Oh, no, no, no. I was wiping something from the screen. But oh, okay. You, you were right on track because what I was going to ask was, so we have a couple different models and I like this. How do you see tying that into some examples for folks to get an idea of? And you were just about to, I think, get into some Gutenberg specifics of how it approaches. Right. So in, in React, inside of a component, um, if you're familiar with that, you can, uh, you can have both the props that are passed in and then you have your own internal state of that component. So that's called state is the name of the property. But you can't just mutate, you can't just say this.state equals the new value. That's not going to cause the update life cycle in React. Okay. You have to use this.set state. Right, which is a function that updates state. Um, and the API for that is not coincidentally basically what set attributes is in your block callback, in the edit callback. You have props.set attributes. You have this function that lets you update the state, whatever that is above you in Gutenberg, right? Because your block is pretty low on that kind of data falls down from whatever. Now, I happen to know it's Redux because, like, you know, that's not a secret or anything. It's a software. <laughs> but like conceptually, it doesn't matter to me as a plugin developer, right? Yes, correct. Because it's just, I have this function set attributes and I'm going to, whenever I need to update the value of my block attribute, I'm going to say set attribute, set attributes, and then pass it an object with yeah. the update. That's it. They could change it out to, you know, they could write their own WordPress state management system tomorrow. They could switch to Preax over Redux, right? It wouldn't matter to me. And that's, when, that's why I kind of pivoted on the single responsibility principle. Mm -hmm. Is that in my original example of how we've done it, because you know, it's easy and it works and it's less complexity. Um, I said that's, a mono, you know, that's putting your user interface system and your state management together. And now they're not testable. Now they're not reusable. Yeah. They're very strongly coupled. Whereas in WordPress, what we have now is this really great pattern of set attributes is just set attributes. It's always going to have that API, but we can reuse that um, with Redux in other contexts because it's the same API. And you're also getting access to some of the WordPress content in terms of state management as well, right? Because it does exist outside of your block too. Right. So what's cool about Redux is you can basically subscribe to stuff. Right, we talked about this with my idea of using an event bus in Vue. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty common pattern um, in Vue where it's just like, this component emits an event, this component subscribes to an event. Um, and so Redux is no different. It's just an abstract system that does that, right? Um, in terms of when you update, you know, in the inside of your component, you're going to have an event handler for a text input you're going to dispatch an event to wp.data, right? That's the Redux abstraction now in Gutenberg. And then somewhere else, you might subscribe to that. And then because every block is registering selectors, um, you can query against other blocks, for example, core editor blocks. So the post title is just a, you know, core editor block, essentially. Right? So you can subscribe to, you know, Zach, you know, Zach Gordon slash, you know, and then some of those have some helper it. functions along with them as well, too, right? Yeah. So when you subscribe to like core editor, there's the helper function um, whose name escapes me that lets you like say, I want this it this post attribute, and then you know title excerpt that kind of thing. 
Um, and so then you can subscribe to that in your, um, in your, um, in your post. So let me give you a practical example there, please. Cool. Real quick is that if let's say you subscribe to the post title and then you had a block that was recommended posts, mm -hmm. right? You know, we've seen this a million times, that kind of plugin that adds those three at the bottom, but you could real time update the, um, those three suggestions there. Based on how they're entering in the title. Yeah. Yep. Or something else, right? There's a lot of other data points, <laughs> posts, point. categories, yep. Yep. X, you know, the first paragraph, the excerpt that you would want to do that lookup based nice. on. Yep. But you could be doing that in real time and then you could actually detach subscriptions. So imagine a plugin that has, gives you the ability to add three, but it gives you recommendations and we're subscribing to that. You could make it so once there are three set posts, recommended posts, it unsubscribes, hmm. right? Because it was yep. suggesting three to you, but like you don't need three anymore. You got them. unsubscribe. Now you, you know, you're not doing that extra bit of processing overhead in the editor that you know underneath. Yep. Cool. So showing the full life cycle of it, recommendations for it, hard examples of it. This is, this is solid. So let me ask you, cause I don't want to take too much time and we don't want to turn this into the actual talk yet. I want you to uh, <laughs> still I don't go into more time. Um, what are your thoughts on, so right now we have state management within the editor, but as we've found, once you get out of the editor, it hasn't yet been built for the customizer fully necessarily or for the front end if you want your own front end React and um, Redux store stuff to be happening. So we also don't want to pinpoint the project too much of where it is now versus where it will be, but do you want to kind of get into that situation, describing that landscape maybe is a good way of saying it? Yeah, so I don't know the answer to this question. I think, I, I, so here's what I don't know. And hopefully by the time we get to, to the conference, we'll have better ideas about this. You and I will talk more about this. And so um, am I going to, if I build some components that are decoupled from Gutenberg, if their reference implementation is a Gutenberg block, yep. so they're built around wp.dev. Do I write the store for that in a way that works with WP data or read it? Right now is not that hard to do because it's just a wrapper. Or do I strongly couple it to wp.data? But what I'm doing in the front end or a non-Gutenberg post-editor context is doing new wp.data. Um, right, that's the alternative. The first one works right now. I can do that now. The second one you can't do now. Um, and I'm not 100% sure actually makes sense. Interesting, okay. Um, I just don't know if WP data is the Redux implementation of the of Gutenberg specifically, or no, if it's, it's abstract enough. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, good point. Okay, right. Yeah. And yeah. we don't know because it literally doesn't work yet to do that. Um, but and I also couldn't tell you uh, which of those two you know solutions is better. I think they're both valid. Um, it would encourage people to think about both um, and to play with this first idea because you can, and it's a good approach, I think, of having your code be decoupled from WordPress is good. Yeah. Um, because it makes it more testable and makes it more reusable. Um, but I do, you know, and just make it work with Redux. And then that the technical debt that you're taking on there for doing so is maybe in the future WordPress will have a different API than Redux. Okay, but like NPM can install a, ver a specific version of Redux. <laughs> Not the greatest long-term solution, right? Because you know, other things go out of date with it, but it's a solution. And also it's simpler, impossible. Interesting, yep. Right, versus the other one, presuming there's a future in which I can just NPM install WP data into anything. Um, I will, right now it's just one, there's not a level of abstraction there that well, feels I look, I look forward to the 2019 conference when you're like, here are the NPM it, it scripts to install to run everything and uh, have it be completely independent. Yep. I literally yeah. think you're not, like that's funny, but I think we'll be able <laughs> to do that in a year. And that's exciting. I, cool. Okay. So 
I love it. This is all sounding good. Let's see, are there any other things that come to mind um, in relation to this, thoughts ab about it? Um, I think that this is pretty stellar topic. I'm, I, I'm excited to hear you talk about this with slides and whatnot. Yeah, me too, because like I haven't, like, <laughs> it's not just that I haven't figured this stuff out yet. It's that some of it we haven't, like, there's just not the ability to come to a conclusion yet. And that's really neat. Yeah. Um, well, luckily we have Riyadh, so. <laughs> great. So, okay. So that sounds um, good in terms of timing. It's kind of a nine to five. I'm going to stage them out. There may be two tracks. Is there any time in particular that is, wouldn't work for you? I think we're both East coast. So. Um, no, I, I'm in this nine, like nine or 10 to five or six. Okay. Eight, okay. Eight in Berlin, you know, sanity uh, life. So yeah, whenever. Um, nice. Okay, so what, uh, let's see, do we have, um, I'm going to, I want to kind of post a schedule. We know that the topic is going to be, are we just calling it, or this might not be the title, but the topic is like data flow in WordPress with JavaScript or how, what do you see? How about this? I'm going to type this. I can't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can throw it in the chats and I'll yeah, have a really record good. of it. Perfect. Oh, okay. Cool. I was going to put it. Do you mind if I do it in Slack just so I can see it more easily? Sure. I'll allow um, it. Thank you. Um, and I got to run. But um, I would say. Best. Wait for it, folks. It's going to be so good. Boom. Five words. Six. I'm not counting. And. All right. Four I don't words. have a Slack open right okay. now. I said Slack state management for Gutenberg and beyond. State management for Gutenberg and beyond. I like it. And then the other alternative would be. Do you want to just say WordPress and beyond? Hold on, check this one out. Let's see if I can get it on my phone here. Gut management and beyond. The state of state with Josh Pollock. <laughs> state, the state of state in WordPress. <laughs> yeah, let's use it at least three or four times. The state of the state well, of. Yeah, state I know. I've got WordPress. a really good one, but it uses like state like seven in, in it in like 12 times. Let's get a good one. WordPress that sounds right. In WordPress in and around Gutenberg. It still has one too many words, but it's almost there. JavaScript state management in WordPress in and around Gutenberg. JavaScript state management in WordPress, Gutenberg, and beyond. What about that? Say it again. JavaScript state management in WordPress, Gutenberg, and beyond. Kind of a combo of the two. I hope folks really like listening to these talks. I mean, Josh is sharing good stuff. You're listening to live talk of titles here. If you're one of those people who likes giving titles to things, you know. We're, I, oh, I thought you were dead recording. Oh, nope, nope. We're, we're still live. Okay, um, good. JavaScript better... State Management and WordPress Gutenberg REST API at home, work, life, and health and beyond. Okay, cool. Right, hold on. Is this live? No, we're not live. Okay, shit, I'm so <laughs> fucked, dude. You should have mentioned that. Um, okay, yeah, I gotta run. I okay, gotta perfect. This is good. We'll workshop the title and time sounds good and I love the topic, dude. Thank you so much for all you're doing, man. Okay, and definitely don't edit any of this. <laughs> Cut it raw. <laughs> Leave the whole thing. Okay, in. we can do that. I'll send you the link to preview first. Hey, man, okay. can I get a wave before we go? And uh, thanks again, man. Ciao. Okay.